The objective of this video is to offer a foreign perspective on the culture of the United States. This perspective will necessarily be partial and it does not intend to offend anyone. Hello, I'm an Italian citizen who was born and grew up in Italy. I visited the United States for the very first time two years ago, and so far I spent in total eight, nine months in the United States, mainly in New York City and in the Northeast Coast. I know it is a very partial experience of the United States as this is one of the most diverse countries in the world, but my knowledge about the American culture doesn't only come from my direct experience of it. In fact, as any other Italian from my generation, I grew up consuming American content, from the music I was listening to, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Stevie Wonder, Michael Jackson, R.E.M., Pear Jam, to the movies we watched, Forrest Gump, Pulp Fiction, Mrs. Doubtfire, Mission to Mars, Down By Low, even some TV shows like David Letterman and Jimmy Fallon, or the American cartoons, tons of cartoons, South Park, Beavis and Butthead, Family Guy, The Simpsons, The Simpsons, The Simpsons, The Simpsons, and don't even get me started with the TV series, Dozens Creek, Seventh Heaven, The O.C., Desperate Housewives, Smallville, The Big Bang Theory, How I Met Your Mother, New Girl, Friends. This video is titled Thoughts of a Foreigner on American Culture and that foreigner would be me. I'm a very specific person with a very specific view on the world. Just keep that in mind before you comment, because I have not that kind of arrogance for thinking that my perspective is the right one or that all other foreigners have the same one as I do. The first time that I came to the United States, after spending one month here and observing the culture and the habits of the people, I just came up with a character for the United States. I thought that this country was like a rebel teenager. And I kept thinking about this simile every time I came back here, and the metaphors stick to me till nowadays. So I will spend the rest of this video explaining and describing to you why I think that the United States are like a rebel teenager. Of course, we need to start with a little bit of history. Who are the people who build up this culture? Well, unfortunately, we all know that Native Americans are nowadays only a very small portion of the entire population. So the vast majority of the American citizens are people who came here from somewhere else in the world. And we don't really care where the people come from because it's such a big melting pot that the country of origin doesn't matter that much in this case. What I'm interested about is for us to think about what kind of individuals were those ones who decided to give up their entire life in their homeland and take a ship or a plane to cross an entire ocean and start a whole new life in a different continent. These people were definitely a very small fraction of the entire population of their country. So they must have been some features in common, some personality traits. Whatever condition these people left in their countries, there were many other compatriots who were living in the same situation. So the fact that only these few people decided to change continent, to me means that they had to be something in common. I can imagine, first of all, that these were not people that were very well adjusted in their society, and they were obviously not very attached to their homeland. For sure, they had to be very courageous people and with a strong spirit of initiative. For sure, they were not people who were content with their life, they surely were more ambitious than their neighbors, and they surely were not people who were just happy with enjoying the small pleasures of life. I selected four features of Americans that I immediately noticed when I came here for the first time, and I think they are very peculiar of the United States. These are features of its populations that I find more here than in other countries that I visited. First of all, strong energy and willpower. Americans are usually not what you would define a chilled population, they are definitely people with lots of energy, lots of ambition, they want to build stuff, they want to achieve things, so they set their goals, they are determined to reach them, and they often succeed. That takes a lot of willpower. Second, an incredible, incredible sense of initiative. I was raised thinking that when you have an idea, you think about it, and during your days you have a lot of ideas, and I was taught that thinking is a very good activity. So what I spent my life doing was thinking, 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 thinking. Americans are not like that. 
When they have an idea, they go out and try to implement it into the world. They have the greatest sense of initiative that I've ever seen in my entire life. Here, ideas are not meant to be thought through, they are meant to be realized in real life. So when anyone has an idea here, usually what he does is he goes out and do it. And if he fails, the next days he will have another idea and will go implement it all over again. So play it safe, it's not really an American feature. Third, individualism, individual freedom and autonomy. Individual freedom is the highest value of the society of the United States, in my opinion. This is why there is a constant reach for autonomy and independence from anything and anyone. So for example, here there is not much trust in the state apparatus. Not that many people rely on the state as much as I was used to from my home country. Based on this principle, I've seen the biggest acts of generosity here in the United States, made by individuals to other peers or friends. I've also seen the biggest lack of interest or care or solidarity or empathy towards people who are not friends or peers. We've talked about this strong energy that Americans have, their high value for autonomy and individualism, and this all brings to my fourth feature, the feeling of omnipotence. The American population has this exuberance, this ebullience, this belief that they can achieve anything in the world, especially the belief that if they work hard enough, everything is possible, which brings to the feeling of omnipotence that I was telling you earlier. There is definitely a lot of exuberance here, but not much sense of limit. And especially what I don't see is the self-limitation in the name of higher values or entities which in this case I shouldn't say higher entities because we have said that the highest entity for Americans is the single individual. So I would rather say broader and bigger entities like the state, like the community you live in, like the family you're part of. So at this point, if you have to attribute one character to the American culture, let's say, American way of living, American way of thinking, what would it be? Of course, a rebel teenager. A rebel teenager is that youngster that has a lot of ideas, a lot of energy. He wants to go out in the world and do things, build stuff, try new things. And definitely the United States has shown us this attitude immensely. They are the pioneer country in so many fields. They have made so many scientific discoveries, so many technological advancements, all the internet is basically a product of the United States. They have definitely been a big protagonist of the Industrial Revolution and whatever brought us to. So this condition of full comfort that we all live in, low mortality rate, longer life, and all these kind of things that are called modernity. What does a rebel teenager do though? He escapes home and he denies everything that has been taught to him. He wants to do things the way he thinks is right and not the way his parents taught him to. And look at the United States. They have completed, eliminated the moral values that their ancestors took thousands of years of wisdom to develop. They deny anything that for the old war is considered as common sense and they just want to make up their new rules. So it's like Europe took 2000 years of history to reach the grown-up state and start making babies. There are a few in the American continent and there is one in particular that grew up as a rebel teenager. So now all that Euro can do is to look at the situation and patiently wait for its kid to maybe one day become a grown-up adult and gain some wisdom while it gets old and tired. This is the first video of a series on American culture that I've been procrastinating for one year or more. And the reason why I was procrastinating is that this is a very sensitive and delicate topic. It's hard to talk about the country that is not yours without offending its citizens. 
Also, probably because I come from an academic background, I always have the feeling that I have to have an immense knowledge about the topic before talking about it. So I felt like I should have read tons of books and, and visited each one of the areas in the United States. So my dilemma was, should I do it or not? My instinct kept telling me that I should have done this videos. So here I am, I'm starting them in the hope that Americans will understand that I'm not aiming at making strict judgments and offending people. So if you notice any discrepancy or nonsense in what I say, please think twice before writing an aggressive comment and rather try to write a constructive comment. I would like that the things that I say that make no sense to you would become a cue of discussion in the comment, like a trigger, a starting point for discussing more and going more in depth in the topic. So please now let's go to the comment section is the best and most underrated feature of this platform in my opinion. It drives me crazy how YouTube is neglecting it. Let's use it and let's make a good constructive use out of it. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell because I'm going to make other videos and go deeper into this topic. See you.